Okay, the next step is we're going to create a hole for the axle to go through. Um, and then we're going to create the axle and constrain that. So that's what we'll be doing in this video. So the first thing we're going to do is modify the side. So anytime we're modifying um, a side, we want to always create our active components um, when we do that. So I'm going to then create a new sketch and I want to find the exact center of this opening space here because if you think about it, there's going to be walls on the inside of all of this here and I want to find the, the midpoint of that. So to do that, I'm going to use a couple construction lines. Um, now an easy way to find a midpoint is just do diagonals and where they intersect. So I'm going to do a diagonal from here to here and then a diagonal from here to here and that is now our midpoint uh, of that and I can put a point um, on that spot. It's an easy way to find it. Um, if I change this, which I'll show you, it should update and modify all of the things that we've created so far. So I'm going to stop the sketch. Um, I'm now going to use the hole tool and click on this. And uh, the hole that I'm going to put in here is um, I'm going to do a 0.25 hole. The diameter of my axle is 248 thousandths, so this is 250 thousandths, plus when the laser cuts it, it's going to be about six to eight thousandths bigger than that. Um, if I need to make it bigger, I can go ahead and modify it um, a little bit later to give it a little bit more clearance, but I don't want it to be super slop sloppy, but I want it to turn fairly effortlessly. So we'll go with 250, and then if we need to modify, we'll do that uh, once we cut it. Uh, we'll do some testing as a class and then see if we need to. Uh, but you can see that that hole now goes uh, through both sides. So each side has a hole in it uh, ready for the axle to be inserted into there. Um, now let's just do some testing. So if I do a modify, and let's say that I change the depth to 4 inches, we should see the feet change uh, length, but the hole stays in the middle there. And then if I do another modify, and let's change the height. Let's pump this up to five inches. Again, we should see that that layer stays one inch away, but again, the hole stays in the middle of that open cavity space, which is great. So this does exactly what I want it to do. Um, when I change my parameters, everything adjusts accordingly, which is fabulous. And there we are back to where we were. Everything modifies and adjusts accordingly. So parameters are really cool uh, for that reason, is that you know if you make some design changes to your box or what you're going to have on top, and you're like, oh, I need a little more width, or you know, I need more height for my uh, for my stuff up top, and I need to shrink this box. Great, like you can do all those things, and it makes it makes it really easy. Next thing we're going to do is a new component. We're going to make an axle. So typically I like to name them first, and then I'm going to do a new sketch. I'm going to put it on this plane because I'm going to draw a circle and extrude it. So I'm just going to keep it in the same orientation that it's going to be. You could get rid of all this, um, but it's not in my way, so I'm not going to worry about it. Uh, this is 248 thousandths. And I'm going to go ahead and extrude it um, 5.75 inches. So not quite six inches, just so I have clearance there. A couple things that I want to add to this. Um, I want to add a work axis through the middle, and then I want to add a work plane so that I can tell that it's rotating. So I'm going to go to Construct, Axis Through Cylinder, click on the outside face. There's my work axis. I'm going to create a plane at an angle off of that work axis so it goes right through the middle. I'm going to leave it at zero degrees, and I'm going to shrink this up. So we don't, we don't need this big giant work plane. We just want to be able to see that when we click on it and move it, that it's actually rotating. Because it should be a, we're going to do a revolute um, constraint with this item. So um, now we're ready to constrain it. I don't want to see a lot of this stuff. I only really want to see this side. Um, so I'm going to get rid of, you know, looking at, looking at these things. And now, um, when I actually laser cut this, I'm not going to laser cut this hole on this side. This is going to be a, an engraving so that I know where to line up 
the pieces that are going to help support this rod. And that will be a little bit clearer when we make those pieces. But I'm going to now currently join this one to this inside. So they're going to be touching, uh, but they're going to be able to um, revolve. So I'm going to use the revolute command. I want to have this side touch this side here. And if you notice, it should be able to revolve as it, as it goes, and that's what that shows. So that's perfectly where I want it. You can see the other side that it sticks out through. The other side, about, uh, about 0.875 actually, because again, it's 5.75, but it's also not all the way through here. So this is five inches from outside edge to outside edge. So we gotta add a thickness plus the 0.75. So if we did an inspect, we could inspect from here to here. And that did a diagonal, but we want to look at the um, the yeah we'd have to we'd have to do some special things to actually get that length. But just trust me, it's it's 0.875 on that. So there's our axle in place. Now we need to have some supports to hold that up. So I'm going to create another component. This is going to be axle support. And again, I want the axle to freely uh, move inside of this. So I'm going to create just two circles. Inner diameter is going to be 250 thousandths, which is going to be the same as the hole that's in the side. And then this one is just going to be um, like half an inch. Um, I might make this three quarters just to give a little more surface area for glue. I'll, you'll see what I mean here. So when I extrude this, the thickness, we're going to place this thing right here. And what that's going to do is we're going to glue this to the back wall. And this axle is going to insert into that. And it basically supports the side of the axle. And then we're going to do a couple different, a couple layers of that. So that way it, you know, doesn't fall out. And then we're going to put another one of these on the inside here, but we're going to glue it to the axle this time instead of the wall. That way the axle can't pull out. If it's got a glued disc sitting right here to the axle, when we try to pull that axle out, it won't come out uh, when we actually physically build our box. So I'm going to need three of these. I'm going to put two on the inside here, and then I'm going to attach a third one to the axle. Um, so let's do that let's do a copy we're going to paste and we'll just capture the current position we'll just move that and then we'll do another one paste remove it and that should be good so don't want to see the axle don't care about this side we're now going to rigid constraint those two together so put a rigid I want this rigidly constrained to that. And now if you notice, it's not sticking out, so I'm going to hit the flip button to flip it. So not sticking where I want. I'm going to do the same thing. Another constraint, this one to this one. Again, got to flip it. So now it's sticking out. Perfect. And if I open this back up, we should now be able to see that the axle goes through there. Now again, the work plane is kind of a pain, but you can see that the axle goes through both of those, does not go through this. And now we want to constrain this one into here, but you got to think about, okay, what's your spacing when I move this back over here? So if I constrain it to the edge, I need to move it back 0.875 plus another uh, eighth of an inch plus a little bit of a tolerance cap. So it's just going to be a little bit over an inch uh, when I move this back there. So I'm going to do another uh, constraint, um, a rigid constraint between this and this. And now I'm going to move it back. Uh, we'll do one point. That looks good. So we get a hundred thousandths tolerance. We might do um, 05 here. Let's try that. Now if we show the second side and look at it from the front, we should see that there's a little bit of clearance there. Um, so that if I tried to pull this axle out, it would stop it. It would only come with just a touch. 
Uh, we could make that less than 50 thousandths, but that gives us a little bit of clearance um, in that regard. Um, so it can move slightly, but not very much on that. Hopefully that makes sense. Uh, if we put the rest of the box together, we can, we can see that, um, that everything fits the way it should. And that's how we create an axle with supports uh, to hold it in place.